Hey folks, welcome back to another episode of the Futures League Rundown. I'm your host, Ben Hayes. Last night we had five games, and all five of them went down to the wire. Let's see what happened. Game one of the night was a thriller as the Bravehearts welcomed Wachusett to Worcester. Kevin Tice hit the hill for the Dirt Dogs, and he was lights out. Tice slung for six innings, allowing no runs on four hits and three walks, while striking out five. He left the game with a 4 nothing lead. On the offensive end for Wachusett, Clark's Kyle Bonicki had himself a big day, hitting three singles and a pair of doubles to go five for six, while knocking in a run and scoring twice on his own. His batting average is now up to 426, good for second in the Futures League. Down five to four with two outs in the bottom of the 11th and a runner on first, Worcester's Zach Tower comes in to pinch hit, and he delivers with some tower power in his solo at bat of the game as he sends a rocket to deep center field on an RBI double to tie it all up. Falcons' Matt Diesel would then knock Tower home in the Bravehearts walk-off. Worcester wins this one 6-5. Looking to stay in second place in the West, Bristol played host to the Rocks last night. Paul Versteeg out of St. Mary's got the start for Bristol, he's 3-1 on the year. Versteeg allowed one run on five hits in his 5.1 innings of work, striking out two in the process. He got the no decision. Frankie Gregori, who hails from my alma mater, Marist College, had himself a pretty good day. He went 1 for 4 on the day with a big RBI triple. Nick Conti out of Eckerd chipped in with his 8th multi-hit game of the season. Conti went 2 for 4 on the day with a pair of singles, scoring both times. Blues take this one over Brockton, 3 to 2. The Titans took the ferry over to the Vineyard to battle the Sharks. A Hunter Trolley 2 RBI single in the top of the second inning would be all the scoring that Torrington would get, but it would also be all that they would need. Quinnipiac's Chris Enns took the hill for his first appearance of the season, and he dominated the Sharks lineup, throwing for six innings and allowing no runs on five hits while striking out two. He would pick up the win in this one as Torrington takes it 2-1. to one. The Silver Knights headed to Seacoast to take on their divisional rival Mavericks. If Nashville won this, the two teams would be tied for first place atop the East Division. Miami's Ryan Guerra wasn't about to let that happen, however. Guerra gave up one run in his six innings of work, while striking out six and conceding five hits. He would get the win. Steven Octave provided the offense for Seacoast, as the catcher out of Franklin Pierce rocked his sixth homer of the season. Mavericks reassert their prominence on the East, beating Nashua 4-1. The Suns took on the Navigators in the last game of the night, and it was the Jameen McCann show in this one. The pitcher out of East Tennessee State struck out 11 batters in just 5.2 innings of work, while allowing only one run on five hits. McCann is now back atop the strikeout leaderboard with 54 on the season, as he and Bristol's Izzy Fuentes keep going back and forth. Oklahoma's Thomas Hughes had his third game of three or more hits this season, as he went 3 for 7 with three singles in this one one of which drove in a run to give Pittsfield the lead. Nick Benedetto of Trinity made things difficult for the Suns, however. The North Shore second baseman went 3-for-6 on the day, hitting a single, a double, and his first homer of the season while also walking once, just a triple away from the cycle. De Benedetto now has a six-game hitting streak, having at least one hit in every game since the All-Star break. In those six games, De Benedetto has a monstrous 12 total hits. He wouldn't be enough alone in this one, however, as the Suns take this one 5-3. to three. Now time for the player and pitcher of the night, brought to you by On Deck Sports, the official sponsor of the Futures League. The On Deck Sports player of the night goes to Kyle Benicki of the Wachusa Dirt Dogs, as the shortstop out of Clark had five hits on the night, two of which were doubles. Benicki drove in a run and scored twice more in the losing effort. The on-deck sports pitcher of the night goes to Ryan Guerra of the Seacoast Mavericks, as the pitcher from the U defended Seacoast's first place spot by beating the Silver Knights. Guerra towed the rubber for six innings, striking out six while conceding one run on five hits. We got more Futures League baseball coming right at you tonight. Let's go look at the matchups. In the first game of the night, Casey Aubin and the Seacoast Mavericks welcomed the Bristol Blues to town, with Teddy Carey getting the start for the Blues. First pitch at 635. 
Eric Close gets the start for the Worcester Bravehearts as they head to Wachusett to battle the Dirt Dogs. Joe Schaefer will tow the rubber for Wachusett. The Sharks head to Torrington for the second half of the home and home against the Titans. Nick Williams will take the hill for Torrington. First pitch at 7. And in the final game of the night, the Silver Knights look to rebound from yesterday's loss as they welcome the Suns to Nashua. Gavin Hollowell on the bump for the Knights. First pitch of this one will be at 7 o'clock. Well, folks, there you have it. There is today's Futures League rundown. Be sure to go out to the ballparks close to you to enjoy the Futures League in person. It's phenomenal, I promise you. And, of course, throw us a follow on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. Until next time, I'm your host, Ben Hayes. See you guys tomorrow.